Good afternoon, gentlemen and gentlewomen. I've been told are 5% of the viewer base for this channel. We, today we are going to talk about plateaus and how to get through plateaus in the best way. And I'm going to introduce you to a technique that I use with myself, with my clients to prevent them from plateauing and allowing them to maintain high degrees of volume and intensity so they can carry on gaining. Very important. So a novel technique, but one which is super simple and you can all take advantage of. So today I'm spilling the beans on this very useful technique. So let's get straight into it. Now, first of all, when it comes to plateaus, I just want to get this out of the way. If you are not already eating in a surplus, sleeping well most nights, aiming to reduce stress, then you need to get those in check because if you're not doing that, you have bigger problems and they are going to be more of a determinant of whether you progress than what I'm about to tell you now. Okay, so with that out of the way, we will begin. Okay, so the plateau. Now, if you are truly stuck on an exercise, but everything else for the body part is still moving up, then this is a very common scenario. And here's where we can provide some solutions. Now, if you are stuck on every exercise, everything's stuck, you're just not making any progress, this is not the video for you, okay? You have more fundamental problems which probably relate to slide one or which may relate to the amount of volume you're doing, the amount of intensity you're doing, all that kind of stuff. They are more fundamental problems. This is when you fundamentally have a good routine. You have a track record of progressing. You might have been working on this routine for three or four months. You've been gaining for three or four months. Everything is going great, okay? But you've managed to stall on one or two or three exercises across the entire week. And you're like, what do I do? Okay, coach, what do I do? Here are some of the common solutions. So most people I think would say something like this. They'd say, okay, if it's one exercise, replace that exercise. That's fine. It's a good way to go. So if you're really stuck on this amazing chest press machine at the gym, but everything else to do with your chest is going up, fine, just replace it. That's one idea. Second idea is a weight reset. And I've talked about this before as well on the channel, periodic weight resets. There was a video on that. It's very useful. It means that every now and again, you just reset the weight. You take it back about 10 to 20%, give it good form, give it good feel, and then you build back up again with the idea that you'll just bust through the plateau, which works pretty well. Third potential solution is a new rep range. And the fourth potential solution is to change the exercise order, essentially changing the routine, or in some cases, a completely new routine. Now, these all have one common problem. Can you guess what it is? What is that common problem? You can pause it, write in the comments, what is the common problem? And I'll tell you, all of these solutions, they cause a temporary pause in progress, okay? So whether you switch the exercise out or you reset the weight, change the exercise order, change the routine, whatever it is, they will necessarily cause a temporary pause in progress as you readjust to finding your poundages and building them back up to the point where they're productive over a week or two. The strategy that I'm about to teach you allows you to continue making progress with no pause required. Now, this is important because you can also maintain a high degree of volume and intensity, which you won't be able to do if you have to do a weight reset or if you have to switch exercises around. And this also, this technique that I'm about to show you may also temporarily improve the stimulus and reduce the fatigue, but temporarily, but still useful. Gives you a bit of a break. So what is the solution? <laughs> I realize I've been building this back up for a while, but that's not intentional. I'm just trying to preface all the necessary caveats. So it's a very simple solution, really, and it is adding another rotation. So let's take a very common split, upper-lower training four times a week. So you have upper A, lower A, upper B, lower B, okay? And let's say in this example, on upper B day, the chest-supported row has stalled. And you've identified it's a, it's a proper stall. You've given it a few sessions. It's really going nowhere. But everything else to do with your back is going up. And you've taken care of all the other factors. You're doing everything right. You've been on the routine for three or four months. You've been making great progress. And this is your favorite back exercise. 
but it's just not going anywhere. So the very simple solution is this. Add in a third rotation, another rotation. So you have upper A, lower A, then upper B, lower B, and now you have upper C, lower C. So the inclusion of that extra rotation, it accomplishes a few things. But one of the very first things it does is it allows you more time between that chest supported row session. So there is more of a gap. Now that chest supported row might be in a position where you're handling so much weight on that. You've been progressing solidly for three or four months. You're handling so much weight on that. You're causing quite a lot of damage to the lig ligaments and tendons. You're causing quite a lot of stress. There's quite a lot of systemic fatigue associated with that. And you just need more time between hitting it again. But in the meantime, you want to still hit the back and still get the back bigger and stronger. So with this way, you're resting about 10 to 14 days between hitting that same exercise, but the body part frequency and volume is still high and it's still where you need it to be. You don't have to back cycle anything. So some advantages. So benefits. You lose no momentum at all. Now, when I've done this in the past, the exercise that I've stalled on and everything else in a routine, I don't need to back cycle it because I'm still training hard. I'm still training in that scenario. I'm training twice a week, each body part twice a week. So there is no need to back cycle. I find what normally happens is given a bit of extended rest, I can get back to that exercise and I can improve. It finally helps me bust through that plateau. Second thing is you maintain high amounts of volume and intensity. There is no back cycling the weight. There is no reduction of volume, both which you need to carry on giving your body a high level of stimulus. And the third thing is due to the brand new rotation, you ever start an exercise you've not done for a while and it just feels really good. You connect with it. There's no predetermined amount of weight you want to hit. All you're trying to do is going in, hitting a good set of about five to 20 reps, really feeling the contraction, feeling the stretch. Damn, I feel pumped. Like I did a new chest and back rotation today and I felt so pumped. Everything felt great because I have no poundage goals in mind. I'm just trying to get a good squeeze, get a good pump, everything. It feels great. So you get a temporary increase in stimulus and a temporary reduction in fatigue because the weights you're handling now are just new. You've not hit those exercises on those rep ranges for maybe months, but you go back to into them and they feel great. So it has massive benefits. Now, just before I move on, I will say, you can use this technique with pretty much any routine. So I gave you the example of an upper lower. You can use it with a push pull legs, it's fine. You can even use it with a body part split. So if you have everything down as once a week, you can just have two weeks worth. Again, very easy. It means in this, let's say you stall on your body part split where you're lifting things once a week. Next week, you repeat all the days, but with different exercises. And then you come back to the exercises you're stalled on the third week. And it's almost certain that you're going to be able to improve at least one or two reps. It just works so well. Exercise variations are tremendously useful, adding in rotations. So you can use it for a body part split, upper lower, push the legs, on or split. You can even use it for full body, just adding in more and more full body sessions. Works tremendously well. So yeah, uh, pretty much that's it. I intended this video to be quite short. It's just a short practical tip. Now. We know with hypertrophy training, the really important thing is to try and maintain high degrees of volume over time. And whatever you can do to keep yourself in the gym, maintaining high volume is almost essential for hypertrophy. So adding in rotations is a very neglected and forgotten about technique, but it's super simple. And it allows you to maintain that volume nice and high. Exercise rotation, however, should be earned, not given. Now. Up until today, pretty much this week, I've been doing the same routine for about four months. And that has been mostly an Arnold split. So chest back, delts, arms, legs. And I've had two rotations. It's only been about three to four months in that I've added in a third rotation. So I've managed to progress for months and months without really needing anything extra. You should add rotations in on an as needed basis, not just throw them in willy-nilly. You don't have to start with three rotations. You can start with two. You can even start with one if you're not that strong yet. And just keep repeating that until you stall out 
add another rotation. Keep repeating that, add another rotation. At the max, I've had about four rotations on the go at once, but that was in a very well-equipped gym with lots of different exercise variations. And it really makes you think hard about the exercise variations you're using. It really makes you think hard about the volume and appreciating that keeping the volume nice and high is very much conducive to growth. So it's a great way to do things. It's a really intelligent way to keep the volume and intensity nice and high, which is necessary for growth. You can think of this as conjugate bodybuilding. Just Westside Barbell has their conjugate method, which allows you to do a load of volume because there's so much variety. We have this. Think of this as conjugate bodybuilding. Let's just stamp it Faz as conjugate bodybuilding. And this will allow you to continue progress, not have to back cycle, not have to wait reset, just add in more rotations. Okay. Don't be governed by the calendar, just add in more rotations. So potentially your routine is now a 10 day routine with three different variations or whatever, but don't be hemmed in by the calendar. Just use different rotations. Even if you're doing a body part split, you have a, a body part B. It works really well. I know plenty of guys who do something similar and it just allows you to maintain progress on the things you're very proficient at while you just slide in another. It's just a very effective technique. Folks, I am going to call it there. Hope you are all well. Hope you are enjoying what looks like the last couple of days of summer. And I will speak to you all in the next one. For now, take care.